UConn went on a brutal run over Thanksgiving. They lost three games in a row, two by single possessions, and one to a blowout to Dayton. Was this a fluke? Was this real? Is this the end of UConn's run? Let's go. The first thing to do when discussing any game or trying to analyze what led to results one way or the other is to look at how each team manufactured their points, what led to their points, what led to their efficiency, etc. The first thing we see when looking at the statistics is we can look over here to the three-point percentage and having 12 for 22, 54%, 55% is a very good day from behind the arc. And then same thing for Colorado, we see 56 behind the arc, 56% behind the arc. And then for Dayton, we see 47%. So in all three games, the opponent of UConn shot extremely well. And so then the question is, is this because of something UConn did or is this random variance? We're going to look at the first four threes taken by each team and see whether that was UConn's fault or Memphis, Dayton, Colorado simply made good plays in the first place. So this first three we looked at, it's essentially because the UConn player is going to go down over here. So Memphis does a very good job of spacing the court First and foremost, the fact that they put shooter, 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 and big men on the inside puts a huge amount of strength on UConn's defense. Realistically, Caravan has to take a gamble there. And so theoretically, what you could do is these players back here would be a little bit earlier to recognize that there's one player down and you could rotate out, have the big come out, and everyone shift down accordingly. However, UConn is a young team. This team hasn't played together played together very young, and this is Johnson's especially first time being in this environment. He played a little bit last year, but not a significant amount. And so him being slow to rotate this is something that UConn is going to have to recognize. All right, the second three-pointer, as this ball screen is set, UConn's defense shifts over here to help with the roller as he's coming downhill. And so that puts strain on these two defenders guarding these three players. For that, when UConn, or when Memphis shifts right here, what it really does is it puts stress on this defender and now this defender because it changes their responsibilities. This is a good job by Memphis if it's built into their system because now Caravan is technically the help defense. And so then you would have McNeely, who was the help defender, is now guarding this player over here, which makes it a much more difficult closeout. And he's not entirely sure where to go versus who is the one actually closing out, as well as this shooter came this way. So that way UConn's other defender also doesn't have a chance to rotate. And so this is a very good job by Memphis in spacing the floor and making sure UConn has difficult decisions and a long way to close out. You can see after this shot goes up, McNeely is a little frustrated because he doesn't think the defense rotated justly, correctly. But I think that's more of a good job on Memphis than it is a negative on UConn. All right, our third three-pointer here. We can see essentially we're playing man-to-man. -man. Everyone has their own individual. There's no motion. This player simply winds up for a three. So some things to take into consideration here is, are you in bad defending position? Do you have a hand up? It, how close is he to the three-point line? So we have two feet beyond the three-point line, three feet beyond the three-point line maybe. Do you have a hand up early? Frankly, I don't have any issue with this defense whatsoever, and he did miss it as well. All right, then we go into our fourth one, and this is a very similar to what we saw, and I believe in our second, is we're worried about this roller right here. Okay, so help defender has to step up. This puts strain on who's going to close out to these two shooters, in particular number 11 over here. As he steps up, Memphis makes the easy pass. They simply pass the 42 here in the middle. And so this is somewhat, there's different philosophies, definitely. 11 steps up here. I think this is probably not the way to go. Unless you know 11 is just an absolutely non-shooter over here, I think you have to essentially jab and have your big recover immediately so that either you or Caravan can close out to the shooter. Instead, what UConn does is Diara stays up here in front of him, and this is way too much space to give 11, unless he's just an absolutely terrible shooter, which my guess is he isn't because Memphis shoots the ball fairly well, and a good on-time pass leads to a wide open three. So then we jump to Colorado, and this one is, I think, the biggest asterisk because Colorado is not that great of a three-point shooting team. They don't have that much volume, and they have way less overall shooters than you had with Memphis or you have with Dayton. Okay, so as 23 is coming up, they're worried about this essentially, like, ball screen without the ball. I don't know, screen without the ball that's going to function essentially as a ball screen. So what UConn's doing in this defense is they are 
hedging. I don't know if Johnson does the right thing here, but they're putting both on the ball momentarily to allow the UConn player to essentially recover. And so they're worried about 50 rolling downhill. And because the ball got swung, I think UConn is a little confused about which of these two would be the one tagging the roller. And so if the ball is on this side still, you would have DR be the one tagging the roller because it's a harder skip pass cross. But because the ball got moved, it should be this player and DR should be the one closing out. So this is Julian Hammond, and he's a very good three-point shooter and not someone that you want to give this kind of space to. We can see that Diara lingers in here in the middle, and you can see it's a little bit late for one to help over because he is slow with the reaction time. But again, I think Diara makes in particular the wrong decision there as to who was the one tar tagging the roller. All right, next three-pointer for Colorado, and this is in transition. Transition's a little more difficult. UConn has plenty of players back right here. Frankly, this should be Caravan recognizing that 20 is back and 20 can go to the post. They got to talk about that early, obviously. But having two over here puts stress on 30, and Caravan kind of leaves them on an island over here. And I'm guessing that UConn's defense was to make sure 23 doesn't score very much based on how they played those last two things. And so, again, you give another wide open three to Julian Hammond. This one is much more difficult because of the transition factor. And, like, this is hard. You would have to communicate this running downhill from back here. So I don't really fault UConn for this one. However, realistically, elite defenses would have everyone picked up and stay home with the six underneath as well as have Johnson coming in back here to guard somebody as well. But that's a very, very difficult task. So then we get to our third defense here. And this one, I think, depends very much on who the person you're guarding is. So they're guarding number eight over here. If we take a look at number eight, that's Doc. And Doc is at best a 30% three-point shooter. So their strategy is going to be to prioritize the other players for sure, prioritize the roller. And so this probably wasn't the exact way they wanted to guard him. However, leaving an open three-pointer for him is at least acceptable. Not to mention his foot was actually on the line as well, which is, I mean, better for UConn. But something you got to be aware of if you're Doc for sure. All right, and then we get to Colorado's fourth of their three of their three pointers, and so this was clearly an intentional set to run Hammond off of the screen right here, and it does it works getting the defender caught on the screen, and it, and so you have a momentary openness because the defender has to work through both those screens right here, but the post does a good job getting a hand up. You don't have to like you're not guarding him forever. Your defender's going to recover. All you got to do is get a hand up to dissuade the shot. I think he does a good job there, frankly, as well. Because this is, he's moving pretty aggressively to his left, and he's pretty far behind the arc. Like, that's that's a difficult shot to make. And if he makes that shot, you just tip your cap to him, honestly. All right, so then we move to the Dayton game. And important for the Dayton game is that Dayton is very good shooter. And you got to give them a lot of respect, and probably even one-on-one, -on -one you got to give them. And so with that, number six is actually shooting 42%. So on this right here, when you get, when you're worried about this drive right here, you still have to give him respect to the three-point shooter, and you got to keep a hand up and maintain a little bit of closer distance, even if the chance of you getting beat increases a little bit. But he is a good shooter. You can't allow that kind of space. Like, that was no real contest and not that much of a step back either to shoot that ball. All right, and then our second three-point shot, we're going to see it come from 29. And 29 is like a 25 26% shooter. So I think this is probably the right defense as well, frankly. And so as this ball screen happens, you can see the post drops up a little bit. And it's going to close out late, but take priority for five potentially coming downhill. And so I think UConn does a great job. Late close out, still get a hand up. And again, if he makes that shot, that's something you're going to have to live with. You know, backing off the rim backward in is, that's tough. All right, so then we get to our third three-pointer. I think this one shows uh, not great defense by UConn. So the trap comes. And so the issue with this is that it's going to put a lot of strain on these other three defenders. So five, I think, does the right thing, especially being a non-shooter. He's going to or not great shooter. He's going to cut down to the middle. And so that forces one of these other two defenders or one of these other three defenders to step up, which makes it so you're going to have players out here that you're going to have to split up and communicate with each other with who has who. So 23 does a great job here being patient, frankly. As five cuts in, you have two players go with them. You have zero come in and you have 20 go in. And this is, this is lack of experience, lack of communication, lack of working with each other. Zero, I don't actually know who it is off the top of my head, so I'm assuming he hasn't got very much playing time. And so as this ball gets kicked out, there's a huge amount of space to this play right here, which is something that you don't want to do because Dayton has him clearly out there intentionally, 
And number two is like a 40, 41% three point shooter. And so that's a good look for Dayton. Even though he misses that, that is not great defense by UConn. And then our last one, and again, I think this one actually represents good defense by UConn, good awareness of who we're guarding. So here, one is closing out, and five is not a great shooter. He's indeed below 20%. I mean, you don't want you want to close out soft, force him to drive, you know, close out soft. You don't need a hand up. If he's going to shoot that, that's probably what you want for UConn, despite it going in this time. That was, frankly, the right kind of defense. And so while this was like a brutal stretch for UConn, I definitely think it has a lot of learning opportunities, which is the, the way that Dan Hurley is going to approach it for sure. Despite this being tough losses from the UConn standpoint, you can definitely build on it for sure. And the fact that it was happened now and the fact that it happened because of your defense and not because of your offense, I think is a great sign because Dan Hurley is obviously a great coach and is going to work with them on defense to make sure they have the right rotations. And frankly, they got unlucky in the fact that the opponents made so many threes against them and that probably won't happen for the forever game if it does then <laughs> you might lose a couple games that being said i am not too concerned about uconn i still think they'll be a very good team